Welcome back. We are at Sidebar and we're joined here by Bill Chu, who's the Managing Director of Grid Resilience in the Program Management Office over at SCE, Southern California Edison. And I am so delighted to have you here today. Um, this is such an issue that we've been tackling from so many different points of view here at, at um, Verge. We also have a Grid Resilience Summit this afternoon that's all focused on how can we make sure that we get affordable, resilient electricity to all Californians and take those lessons around the U.S. So I'm curious to understand from your point of view, what role does the electricity grid play in tackling climate change? Yeah, that's a really great question. So I think in this talk, test, we're talking about uh, electricity as a versatile source of energy. And having been uh, deeply involved in this industry for uh, quite a while, I would say that we're in the midst of, of, of uh, what I call existential transformation to really uh, drive down the greenhouse uh, uh, gas emissions and in, in the course as part of this worldwide effort to reverse the, uh, the climate change uh, that we're uh, dealing with. And I think one of the probably the most obvious and, and ambitious goal here in the state of California is that we wanted to drive down the total greenhouse gas emission down to a level that's 40% below the 1990 level by the year 2030, and to further drive that down to a whopping 80% below the 1990 level by the year 2050. So by all measures, this is really a very ambitious goal. Um, at SCE, we developed a comprehensive roadmap, uh, what we call clean power and electrification pathway. And our vision is to use clean energy uh, to cl uh, uh, to power the transportation sectors and the building sectors and to use clean energies to more broadly reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, not just in the electric sector alone, but more broadly across multiple sectors and multiple industries. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we see this as a, a critical role in enabling the total greenhouse gas emission to reverse the course of the the climate change. So what, what does this mean though from a technical standpoint? I, I don't want to get too geeky, but when you when you talk about resilience, what does that mean that the grid has to, to do? How does it have to evolve? Are there certain sorts of technologies that are going yeah. to play a role in that? Yeah, so um, so think about this. For many, many decades, the our grid, which is the, the transmission and distribution yeah. system as we know it today, are designed and operated for one-way power flow. Mm -hmm. As we continue to integrate these distributed energy resources, we call them DERs, uh, it's going to require a change and in investment in modernizing the grid to facilitate a bi-directional power flow. Mm -hmm. And so that introduces obviously a lot of complexity. Uh, so the grid modernization is going to be, I would say, a key prerequisite to, to enable us to reap the benefit of the distributed energy resources. So what does that mean though for private industry? So as companies play or pilot or try to put their own resources in place at their campus, for example. How do the investments that you're making help them, benefit them, you know, interact with what maybe what they're doing on site? Yeah, so uh, I think this is a great form, the Verge 19, um, to bring together all the industries and, uh, and, and I think electricity being a very versatile source of energy, think about how we can apply these to create a more sustainable business process. Uh, think about how we can uh, change the business process to uh, truly drive down the greenhouse gas emissions and support the overall climate change uh, and, and the climate resiliency efforts that we have. I'd love to hear a little bit more about these distributed energy resources, DERs. So can you help uh, illuminate what role they might be able to play in ensuring resilience? I know right now in California, we're looking at more planned power outages over the next few days because of you know high winds, high weather, high uh, temperatures that could result in fires. And so what role can DERs play and what are the challenges of getting those in place? That's right. So let me first provide a little bit of context about DER. And I think in this context, we're talking about DER and we define DER as predominantly solar photovoltaic, uh, electric vehicle, energy storage, and demand side management. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are going to be increasingly important as we continue to integrate these type of renewable energy resources into the grid. 
DER provides a lot of benefits. Uh, they could be an alternate to traditional wireless investments that are able to reduce the cost to the customers. Uh, DER could provide uh, grid services, ancillary services, uh, that much more flexible, much, much more dynamic. Uh, DER also could provide uh, added resiliency to critical loads uh, on the system, as you mentioned. On the flip side, there is some risk associated with DER. An example of that is with uh, the customer adoption of DER outpace our ability to modernize the grid, it could potentially introduce a negative impact of, of uh, decreased system reliability. So really the important thing is to be able to um, uh, take advantage of DER by directing them to the area that needs it the most and to create incentives so that we could dispatch DER at the right timing to help offset the intermittency of these distributed energy resources. Yeah, well, I'm, I've heard the grid called the largest machine on Earth, and so I realize it's <laughs> no small feat to be thinking about how we can be updating it and taking into account clean energy and also hardening it for the That's future right. that we need. So really, thank you so much for your work, and thank you for joining us today at Sidebar. Thank you, it's a great pleasure, and, and uh, I think we uh, uh, recognize we still have a way to go but I think the early indication are showing some really promising results. And uh, I think everyone has a role in creating a clean energy economy. And I'm just super excited to, to, to be part of this journey. It's a great note to end on. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And with that, let's turn it over to the last day of our main stage program.